Hi, Susan. Thanks for coming in and reading this week. This yeah. was great. You're welcome. So <laughs> tell us, um, have you been working during the pandemic? I have been working during the pandemic. Um, I'm a social worker, uh, but I work on the mental health unit, on the inpatient psych unit. Um, I've been working in Kingston, but due to the pandemic, the they for extra space, they moved our entire unit and the detox and rehab unit from the Kingston Hospital to Poughkeepsie. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I've been working and it's, you know, so that's had its challenges with the move and fitting into um, a different hospital, creating a new psych unit. Sure. Um, but it's definitely needed a lot of our patients some are our regular patients but we have had uh new patients that are coming in that have been impacted by covid and you know they're dealing with a lot of anxieties and I would think uncertainty that, about sure. the future their whole entire social network they can't connect to any longer so Sure. You know. I would think, you know, routines are important for all of us, but yes. I would especially think that people who had psychological challenges and emotional challenges might be more impacted by losing those routines and those senses of, right. yeah, wow. Right. Well, that's amazing kind of work that you've been able to do. That's yeah. great. Yeah. And, and I know that at least last weekend, I think it was last weekend, you went down to the shore for a quick visit. Tell us, I, <laughs> for those of us who have not yet ventured out, what is, what is the shore like? Um, well, it was the Jersey Shore. We went um, all the way down to Wildwood. Um, honestly, at first it was a little scary, um, wondering like, is this the right thing to do? Um, I know I needed for my own mental health. That was the end of my vacation. Just the beach, the sand, every water is kind of my own self-care and therapy. Yeah. But um, people were pretty good. It, kind of like here, you couldn't sit in a restaurant and eat. Um, everything was takeout. The pool at our hotel, even though it was full, you weren't allowed to swim in it. But the beaches were open on the weekend. They had lifeguards. Um, people wore the mask onto the beach, but then they came off and, and people were really pretty good about the social distancing. You know, there weren't, we didn't experience any large groups. So mm -hmm. it was, and we had our um, more than six foot area with um, Gabe and his fiance's family. Nice. We always are so used to seeing you as part of the choir. Tell us how the choir has been making music during this time because we just sort of see the videos, but tell yeah. us how that happens. <laughs> so it, it's, it's a process. Um, you know, Laura still is, you know, doing um, trying to match the hymns and anthems and everything as she always did. Um, James has been putting in an amazing amount of legwork by developing tracks, not only a, a, a full track that would have all four parts, which are the women, which are sopranos and altos, and men, tenors and basses, for those who don't know. Um, so he sends that all out. They have to send out the music because not everyone has a hymnal and anthems at home. Mm -hmm. And we listen to it. We listen to the instructions. We plug ourselves into our computer and we record ourselves individually. Wow. And once we do that, we send it all back to James and he performs a miracle <laughs> by, by taking all of us individually and editing all of that and putting us, putting us all together. That sounds like we were here in the church. And I have to together. say, I'm surprised by how good it sounds. Are you surprised every week? Um, 
I don't know if I, yes and, and no, because when we're all here together, right. I mean, we, we make the music, right. um, but it, it is different and, and challenging because we all hear ourselves back and we're like, oh, that sounds <laughs> awful. We're recording ourselves over and over and over. Like right. when you're in a full choir, like if one person makes a mistake or has to breathe, the other voices that are singing the same thing cover that up. So now yeah. all of a sudden, here you are by yourself with being plugged in and trying to hear the music, hear ourselves and, wow. um, you know, so. Wow. So, and so how has that changed? How has that changed your experience of worship? Um, and, and are you nervous about that kind of moving forward as it looks like it will be, you know, maybe a year before you'll be able to sing in a group mm -hmm. again? Um, that must be hard for the people who are so devoted to it, choral singing. Right. I mean, just as much as we hear um, from the other parishioners, how much hearing the music is part of their worship. Singing is like my part of my tithe, my giving back and um, just that whole process of being together and singing together and making that music together. Yes, is very um, moving for me. Right. And so it, it, it is harder, you know, doing it, it this, this way because I'm not singing with Jennifer or Bonnie, right. you know, it's, I'm in my, my room by myself doing it. Right. Yeah, I have to say, I relate to that on the level of preaching, which is that preaching is something that in, in a weird way, it's, it's just my voice, but I respond so much right. to the cues that people in the congregation give me, right? Right. right. Um, so a, a sermon actually changes uh, from one con from one service to another because of the response that people give. Right. Right. Um, it evokes different feelings and different experiences. I would imagine singing is that same sort of process right. where you know you're with a group and and how the group interprets that song and works together changes mm -hmm. the experience of it right so it's not just notes on a page it's right. a process and and even for us here like hearing the congregation singing hearing people just coming up afterwards and saying that hymn, that anthem, that was just amazing. It was, that was so good. Yeah. Um, so, right, I mean, yeah. we don't, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's different. Yeah. And it's, and it's, you know, it, it's understandable. I mean, the last thing any of us want is to spread the virus Absolutely. through singing. Yeah. Um, and as, as hard as that is, we, we understand. Right. Yeah. Well, and, listen, and for those who, you know, who don't know, I also sing in another group and um, outside of church, um, a lot of us in the choir and are in Capella and we're facing the same challenges there. Like, how do we move forward? How do we rehearse? Zoom doesn't work. It, great Zoom has been wonderful to get together and see each other. Um, but for rehearsing, it, it the feedback, it's, it doesn't sync together. So, you know, it's, it's like, how do we rehearse and move mm -hmm. forward in, in this new age, wow. the new normal? Wow. Well, lots of questions, but Anne, I am so grateful that you've been willing to come in and Welcome. read during Holy Week and all through this. It's been such a gift for us. So thank you so much. You're welcome. And, uh, <laughs> good to see you. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye.